I am Risa Tisa. I am the creator of the Who the F*** Did I Marry series that has been all over TikTok. I do realize that this series has gone completely viral, but I'm happy to see that people are having conversations about it. I'm happy to see that people are watching it, but more importantly, I'm happy to see that it is helping someone, even if it is just one person. That was the purpose of putting this video series up, to tell my story and to tell it detailed and in order. With that being said, I do have a public service announcement. The series, Who the F*** Did I Marry?, is not something that you have to sit down and hold your phone and watch. I did it the way I did it, so that way you actually can listen to it as an audiobook, chapter by chapter, in order. So, if you see this and you're like, oh my God, I'm not doing 50 parts, don't worry. Simply go to my page, click on the playlist, and it will play in order for you. You can listen to all the times I made bad decisions. You can see, you can clearly listen to the good, the bad, the ugly, the embarrassing, but most importantly, the redemption and the forgiveness that I'm trying and learning to give myself. All in all, do not be dismayed by the fact that it's 50 parts. Think of it as an audiobook. That's how it was done. That's how it was recorded. Do whatever you need to do in your daily lives and just play it in the background. And if you still feel like this was way too long, she dragged it out, fair enough. But I challenge you to listen to the entire series. I challenge you to listen to it in order. That way, a lot of the questions you have that you all are asking, they will be answered. If you still have questions at the end, I get it and I understand. You guys be blessed and I hope, I hope and pray that this series has helped somebody. Girl, 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 girl. Have y'all seen the latest series, Who the F Did I Marry? I know most of y'all have watched it in its entirety and some of y'all like myself can sit through 50 parts, AKA an almost eight hour video. But I have the cliff notes for the girls. Yes, I do. So we will be reading the cliff notes, okay, and summarizing this whole saga. I also have some updates, so stick around to the end. Mr. Potato Head has shown himself, okay, Mr. Potato Head, aka Legion, has shown himself. <laughs> and shout out to Janelle Simmons on Facebook. She took the time out to write or to write these cliff notes down. So we do appreciate you, Miss Ma'am. Okay. So let's get into it. So boom, she met him in March of 2020, COVID times, right? Two weeks before the shutdown. They met online and talked for a bit and decided to go out. She has a blowout in her tire on the way to the date, and he helped her with that. He helped her with the tire, paid for everything, still wanted to go on a date afterwards, talked and hit it off. They got along so well that by the time the shutdown came, they decided that he would move into her three bedroom, two bathroom home because he only had a studio. Now pause, keep in mind, this man has painted himself as a high value man, high value, high earning, yet he's living in a studio. Okay, so he moves in with her. He paid everything except for her car note and her insurance and her phone bill. She was happy with this because she never had a man that paid the bills. Fast forward, he told her that he had five siblings, two half siblings that he was close with. This man volunteered a lot of information, okay? He was just spilling out stuff about himself. Nobody asked, but he was telling her his life story. He spoke to his oldest brother every day on the phone. Every day for almost an hour and a half, he was on the phone with somebody, okay? She never spoke to anybody who was on the phone. She never spoke to the brother, um, but he always passed along the messages like, hey, my brother says hi, and she's like, tell him hi. He told her about his ex-wife. They didn't have kids together, but he told her about the stepkids at the time and how he was really close to the stepkids. So now they're at the point where he tells her, you know, I live in a studio, but I've been trying to buy a house ever since I moved out here. And so now at this point, they're living together and they're like, well, we might as well get a house and live together in the house. But every time they tried to get this house, something fell through. He kept giving the runaround about actually purchasing the house, but they did shop for appliances. This was the crazy part. They shopped for appliances, they shopped for furniture, but she ended up finding out that it was a lie and that he never closed on the house and never did any paperwork with the realtor. He was just giving the realtor a runaround, giving her to run around, and then boom, she finds out she's pregnant in April of 2020. 
So at this point, they're like, okay, we really need a house. You know, we started a family. We really need a home. We really need to move. And so now she decided, okay, the first one fell through. I'm going to be more involved. I'm going to be more hands-on. Um, and they put in a cash offer of $699,000. He claims that Chase Bank approved him for $750,000. And she did see the paperwork for this. So there is a lot of delusion happening here. But some things she did have receipts and proof of, guys, I saw this paperwork, okay? So she saw the paperwork for the approved amount. And he told her that, that he had a separate account. He told her she, he had three accounts, okay? Checking, savings, and an offshore account. But he never disclosed how much was in the offshore account. So when it came time for the house and the sellers were willing to accept the cash offer, he had an issue with the sellers wanting him to prove income, to prove his income. He wanted to show proof of income after they accepted the offer. And they're like, no, that's not how it goes. You have to show us your income, proof of your income, and then we will accept the offer. Nobody got time to be running around like the first guy, okay? So that was his excuse for them not getting the house. Obviously, she's upset. She's pregnant. She just wants to close on a home and move. And in her mind, he had the money because he showed her proof of it. He had the money because she saw when he paid for the appliances and the furniture, he was paying all the bills. So in her mind, he has the money. So what is the issue? Around this time, she also found out he was talking to women on Facebook Messenger and she started to question herself. Fast forward to July 2020, she had a miscarriage. She lost the baby um, and he really wasn't there to support her at all. He said he had meetings, he had this, he had that. And so her friend from work was there to help her and support her. He says that his grandmother passes away. And Risa was the type of woman who she acknowledges and respects family and respects the dead. So of course she's there for him. She's, she's there to give him his condolences etc but by now she's also kind of over the relationship nothing had changed every promise that he made fell through there was always an excuse so then we pause on the home buying and we get into the car shopping okay he took her to test drive cars after car after car after car after car they were test driving all of these cars i'm like girl i wouldn't even have to do all of that i know what car i want give me that 2024 range rover sport yeah take me over there all white yeah like so anyway he test drive all these cars he claimed that his his company that he allegedly got a promotion to VP is buying him a company car and with the remaining money he can give her um, you know he can get her a car long story short had her stayed home from work was waiting for the car the car never came this woman literally took off of work and stayed home and waited for a car that was never purchased now, Mr. Potato Head did go to work every single day, okay? He went to work at 6 a.m., came home around 3 or 4 a.m., 4 p.m. So he definitely, quote unquote, had a job somewhere. And by the end of the year, he proposed to her, which I wouldn't really say proposed. He kind of just put the ring on the table and was like, we marry now. Three days after the marriage, she found out that he was cheating on her with a prostitute. And not only that, the things that he was interested in sexually and doing with the prostitute, he claimed that he wasn't into that with her. Okay, all that freaky shit he was doing with the prostitute, he claimed, no, I'm not into that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Further crushing her self-esteem. So she decides, let's get our church involved and let's get into some marriage counseling. Now, the pastor told her straight out, if y'all would have came to me before getting married, I would have told y'all, don't get married. So now he pulls up talking about some, his ex-stepdaughter caught COVID and died. And he wanted to know that if he can help the mom out with $2,000. And she agreed. And she said, you know what? I agreed because I know that these kids were like his kids. That's family. You know, why not help? She ended up buying herself a Nissan Altima, but the note was way more than expected and he was helping her pay it. She told him she was getting another job and he laughed at her. She got another job, but the background check wanted her husband info as well. She needed his social security number. She asked him for the social security number. He denied giving it to her, but she finally got the number and she noticed that the social was different than the social that he put on the marriage license. So she searched the social and all hell broke loose. She discovered that he never resided in California. He told her that him, the wife, the stepkids met in California, got married in California, got divorced in California. That man ain't never seen the shores of Cali, okay? He also claimed that he was this big football player and that was the reason why he had a lot of money and the reason why he had some injuries because he was a football player. He he was never that either. He claimed that the reason why he divorced the ex-wife was because he caught her cheating. Never happened. They both had an order of protection against each other because she beat the living hell out of him after she found out that he was lying about everything. And their marriage didn't even last six months. 
So she ends up finding the ex-wife address and phone number and one of her coworkers was like, listen, you need to call that lady and find out the truth. The ex-wife said, if you're calling me, then things must be bad. And she told her that he lies about every single thing. Anything that he has ever told you is a lie. That man is a pathological liar. So Risa asked the ex-wife about the daughter that allegedly passed from COVID. She's like, well, if he lies about everything, maybe he was lying about this. And asked, you know, how's your daughter doing? She's like, oh, my daughter's fine. Like, what did he say about my daughter? But Risa didn't have the heart to tell her that, yo, he said your daughter died. You know what I mean? She didn't have the heart to tell her that. So she was like, oh, he just said that she had COVID. Child, the ex-wife has spoken out. Okay, she has seen the series. And I'm sure at this point, she knows that that man wished death on her kid crazy so i'm going to address the elephant in the room because it's been brought to my attention that my ex-husband is out here in these streets disturbing individuals as he always has and i have been brought into this let me first say this chapter of my life is closed i have moved on it's been more than 10 years i'm over it i'm done i don't i'm good Okay, but after I say this, let's just leave it alone. I don't want to talk about this anymore. I'm not going to address it anymore because I have nothing to do with this. This is my past life. The book is closed. Okay, so Legion, as y'all call him, is a despicable, nasty and vile individual. I, too, I fell for the trap over 10 years ago. Yes, he was charming and I was broken mentally okay understand self-love was not here at all for me to actually love myself enough to understand that this is not love he manipulated me he loved bomb me all of the oh i'm gonna do this or i'm gonna do that and everything else yes all of these things were said to me guess what none of it happened he's manipulative and he literally tried to ruin my life. He had family turn against me because he wanted to tell people lies about me and things of that nature. And unfortunately, he's very, very good at what he does. It took me many, many, many years to get past that. I have healed. And with this situation being brought back to me, it's like cutting me back open with a dagger because I was already healed up. The Band-Aid had been left. I've gotten married. I'm happy. Been 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 good, right? But this man is a pathological liar. He gave up all types of promises. But to the cars and houses just like Risa. But guess what? None of that ever came to pass, right? So I just need for people to know that this situation was traumatic as hell for me and then I hear about because I've not watched any of the videos because for what like it's not my business anymore I feel bad for anybody that he comes into contact with and I will tell any female that sees his picture don't ever just let it go because he needs some serious mental help and he needs to be he needs to be evaluated and be locked away so that's what I will say and as far as like me not filing for divorce, I didn't file for divorce because I was afraid for my life. I didn't want to be served. I didn't want to, I didn't, if I, in order for me to file, I would have to show, tell, tell him where exactly I was. And I didn't want him to know that. So no, I absolutely was not filing because I was afraid at the time. But guess what? It was, it was ended before it even really started because, but at the same token, I still was very, very, very not mentally, you know, in love with myself. So that's one of the things that really got me. So I genuinely feel, feel empathy for the women that have been down his path. You know, when all this stuff was going on with him and I, there was no social media, TikTok or anything like that. But at the same token, I just wanted to heal through my processes. I didn't want to sit there and have to tell the whole world my business because I'm a very private person and I don't do trauma. And so obviously at that point, she finds out that, you know, there was no communication between them two and that the $2,000 that he said he was sending to her, he didn't. 
child, the grandma that allegedly died in 2020, she had died in 20, in 2008. And at this point, he was getting his ass whooped by karma. And karma know your coordinates, okay? Karma know where you at. That knee was getting toe up from the flow up, okay? He was at the point where he was bedridden because whatever happened to his knee was preventing him from walking. So she confronts him on his birthday and asks him, did he go to college in California? He rolls his eyes, he's upset. He's like, why are you questioning me? Why are you asking me this? I already told you I did. She's like, well, cause I called and they said they don't know you. They don't have no record of you. You didn't go there, you didn't play football there you didn't get married there you ain't never seen the shores of california she tells him he gotta get out her crib he gotta leave he gotta move like now before this turned into a crime scene he calls his aunt i don't know why he calls his aunt and his aunt is like listen i'll give you some money just come back home to philly just come back home to philly and she like he don't need no money he a rich man he don't need no money so she literally helped him move, okay? Took all his stuff while he was limping around, took all his stuff and threw it in his car. Now, she sees bottles of Powerade with urine in the bottles, okay? Because he couldn't get up and go use the bathroom, so he was pissing in Powerade bottles in her home. He goes back to Philly and he's back to his old ways. He tells his whole family that the reason why it didn't work out and the reason why she kicked him out because she was cheating on him and she was cheating on him with a police officer. So one of the cousins called her and she goes, listen, we don't trust our cousin. OK, we know he's a pathological liar. No, none of us are cool with him. He can't stay here. He can't stay there. But what's going on? OK, so they start exchanging stories and exchanging lies. The cousin is ironing everything out, saying, listen, he don't have five brothers and two sisters. He got a twin brother and one old the brother and no sisters she's just like this is insane like who did i have living in my house this is crazy this man literally lied about everything this man was on the phone with casper the friendly ghost every day for hours just talking to himself for hours and not only did he have a twin, but his twin was the one who actually had a job as a VP. His twin was the one who got a company car, BMW. His twin was the one that bought a home with five bedrooms and five baths. Y'all getting what I'm saying? He was trying to live the life of his twin. Now, the woman he claimed was his aunt, who was really a family friend, called to check on the baby. She said, listen, I've been asking him to show me pictures and videos of the baby. He comes down every weekend and I tell him, bring the baby, bring the baby, bring the baby. And he always give me excuses about the baby. And she's like, what baby? Auntie said, he told me you was pregnant. Y'all had a baby boy. She said, ma'am, ma'am. She's like, oh no, I need a divorce. She told her mama, she told her coworker, she told the pastor child, she told everybody at this point. And she also mentioned that she didn't tell her mom, she really didn't tell anybody about what was going on. She did not tell anyone. And she said that reason why the mom kind of took a liking to him was because he also love bombed the mom. He said, listen, his mother died. He don't have a mom, you know, calling her mom. So he played the sympathy card as he does with all the women in his life. Now the best part of the story is they got divorced and she hasn't heard from him since the divorce was finalized. And she came online to tell the story as not, not just entertainment, but as a cautionary tale. Because if this could happen to her, then this could happen to someone else. And I'm sure there are women out there who who's going through this or something similar and you know they need to know that there is an end to the pain you can put an end to it Whew, my 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 so that sums up who the f did i marry series i this lady need to get paid so apparently she was on live on tiktok and apparently allegedly this woman got about eighty thousand dollars okay she always wanted to go to london so the people done sent her to pay for her flight to london and her hotel honey i got a story to tell too <laughs> you're buying people out i got some stories in my pocket but nah she definitely deserves this I, she need a contract somebody need to sign her okay as a writer producer executive producer for this series i need i need actors I, i'll probably need jill scott okay to play risa i need jill we got the cast all lined up listen let's make this happen let's make this let's put this on a big screen because this was good i'm sorry it was bad but it was good y'all let me know your thoughts down in the comment section channel do you know somebody like mr potato head do you know and like <laughs> thing I appreciate about Risa was that she was honest she said you know I was desperate for a man I was desperate for love I was desperate for a family and this is where desperation gets you as a woman it puts you in a very vulnerable position to be taken advantage of y'all let me know your thoughts on this series let me know your thoughts did you watch all 50 parts <laughs> let me know your thoughts down in the comment section
But uh, my message to her is please stop lying to these people and you can tell them the real reason I left you, you cheated. I called you in the house with Bradley and we went to marriage counseling, didn't work and we broke up.